One of the common things that happens in an environment where we have a singular DLR and a singular ESG is the problem of singular flow, right? We only have the ability of sending traffic from the DLR up to the edge services gateway and all that good stuff. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but it doesn't allow us to have any real scale, right? So one of the things we can implement is a feature known as equal cost multipath. And basically the idea is this. If I have a DLR, say I have my DLR configured, and I have a single ESG. I'm gonna put this up here for ease of drawing, ESG1. And then I have my connectivity to the CSR. Actually, let me just draw this this way. I have my connection to the CSR. Everybody's happy, right? But I have only this flow. And let's say I have a logical switch here and a logical switch here. Everybody's happy. Problem is, is everything goes this way, right? Bidirectional traffic is happening like this. What happens if this is on host four and let's say that host four takes a dump, right? We talked about HA in the previous video, but in this particular case, let's pretend like we're HA isn't what we're trying to achieve. We want to, because we can't achieve high available or equal cost multipathing with HA. And you might say, well, why not? Well, because HA isn't an, isn't an additional device being deployed. It is a device that requires a another ESG being deployed so that it can support the capability of having multiple flows. So what I did now in the previous video, we deployed this guy right here. So let's say we have H5 or host five and we deploy edge services gateway two, and we connect the DLR to him and the edge services gateway to that, like that. Now I have the ability of sending traffic out both ways, right? So now, I can have a path going this way and I can have a path going this way and I have equal cost multi path. They're all weighted the same and I can send traffic to wherever I've got to go. The cool thing about this is, is I can even reuse the same subnets. So what I would basically end up doing is from here down, from the edge services gateway two and one down to the DLR and to edge services gateway two to the DLR, these would be BGP peerings. Right? And then from the edge services gateway to the CSR and vice versa, this would be OSPF. Now what I would do is this right here is already a slash 24, right? I don't know how that got written there, slash 24. So what I could do is this guy right here has got a dot one IP. This guy's got a dot two. I can actually go ahead and associate him to the same distributed port group and make this dot three. And then over here, I'm using dot one and I'm using dot two. So what I can do is associate them to the same transit link on this link right here. And I can put this guy to be dot three. So that'll allow me to form a BGP peering between this guy and this guy, and then this guy and this guy. Now, in most cases, this would be just fine. This would allow me to achieve equal cost multipathing and then turn the feature on. And that's pretty much what I'm gonna go do. Now, if you wanted to have it set up to where you weren't sharing the same distributed port group and you weren't sharing the same logical switch, and let's say you weren't using slash 24s everywhere, let's say you were using slash 30s, you could do that. The only thing you'd have to do is make sure that this link right here and this link right here are both different logical switches. So this would be logical switch one, this would be logical switch two. You'd have to make sure that they are different logical switches with a different subnet associated to them when you're configuring the interfaces on the devices so that you can get the connectivity the way you want it to be. So right now, th this guy right here, this VNIC, right, I don't know how that got hung up there, but this guy right here would be the same interface, right? And you'd be forming a BGB peering off of the same interface. If you wanted to have diversity, have two different interfaces as the egress, then you'd have to have another logical switch and tie it to another interface. Just be aware of those things when you're looking at the HA piece. This is gonna take us a little bit to deploy, so let's go ahead and dive into the config because we have to basically do everything we did on ESG1, we have to do on ESG2, and then get that all squared away. 
So let us go ahead and knock this out. Let's go into networking and security. And I'm going to deploy an additional ESG. I'm going to go ahead and say add, add services gateway. I'm going to call this guy DC1-ESG2. Host name is going to be DC1-ESG2. Control VM is going to get deployed. Settings, deploy the username and password. Whoops, wrong. Let me make sure that that's correct. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and turn on SSH. Auto rule generation is enabled. I'm going to deploy one CPU, 512 megs of RAM. Add the edge appliance. I'm going to put this in the management cluster. Data store is going to be data store four. Now I could put this on a different host as well because now that would be applicable. So let's go actually do that. Let's go ahead and put this in data store one. The host is gonna be host five. And then we're gonna go ahead and go that route. Cause this way here, we're gonna be actually able to diversify our configurations. So host four will have ESG one, host five will have ESG two. Click on next, click on next again. And we're gonna go ahead and configure the interfaces. The first interface is gonna be uplink. And I'm going to call it just that. I'm going to call it uplink. And I'm going to connect this to, you guessed it, the distributed port group. Call the NSX uplink. Click on OK. And I'm going to give it an IP address here. Uh, what is my ESG IP address? That should be 10.10.0.1. So this will be 2. I'll make this dot .3. So this will be 10.10.0.3 slash 24. Just like that. Click on OK. I'm going to create an internal interface. This guy here will be considered transit. It'll be an internal connection. I'm going to come over here and click on logical switches of LS1 transit. Click on OK. The IP address here will be 172.29.11.3 slash 24. Click on OK. Next, default gateway. I am going to, um, I could point it. I'll go ahead and just do it because of the fact 11 dot, or sorry, the gateway IP I need. Yeah, and that's the different IP. I'm gonna go ahead and put in 10.10.0.1, uh, .10 which is gonna be the CSR 1000 V. Click next, firewall, pull, firewall is turned on and I'm going to allow and I'll turn logging on for good measure and then finish. So this should get pushed to host five. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to open up a new connection so we can jump back, jump back and forth. Give that a couple of seconds to do its thing. Go ahead and minimize this real quick. Welcome to the vCenter server. Log into that guy real quick. And we can see that the device is being pushed. I'm gonna go down to hosts and clusters. And we can see that ESG2 is getting pushed, but it's getting pushed to host five. Close that out. And we're gonna be able to bounce back and forth and watch watch the, uh, the story unfold before our eyes. So that'll be pretty cool once it gets rolled out and we have it all squared away. So the next thing for me to go do is basically hurry up and wait. So this will take a couple of minutes to do its thing, but once we're there, we'll be in good shape. So I'm gonna quick pause, wait for that to do its thing, and then I'll bring you guys back in. All right, so our ESG is now online. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Launch Web Console. Click on OK. And we're gonna go ahead and log in, admin, and then the password. All right, so I'm gonna do a show IP route. And as you can see, there we are. I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of pings, 10.10.0.1. 10 that should respond. There we go, excellent. I'm gonna go ahead over to the DLR and I'm gonna do a show IP route as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a ping to 172.29.11.3. And that's working, excellent. If I do a ping to .2, 
that's working as well. Awesome, so that means I have connectivity to both. Now I get to go back over here to NSX Edges, and I get to go configure this new ESG with the configuration that I need to have on it. So the way this is gonna work is I'm going to select ESG2, and I need to do a few things. I need to go to the routing tab, and I need to go ahead and set, I have a default gateway set up. I also need to set the routing configuration. I'm gonna choose a custom router ID. I'm gonna use 1.1.1.3. Click on save, publish that. And then an OSPF, actually I have, to, I have to wait till it's, I should be a little bit more patient. I'm going too fast with it. There it goes. I'm going to go ahead and edit OSPF. I'm going to turn OSPF on. Click on save. And then on the air interface mappings, I am going to map the uplink. That's the only, uh, I'm not going to run OSPF between me and the DLR. And I'm going to disable the, up, the uh, interface MTU settings. And I'm going to put this inside of area zero. Because right now, this router here is doing its thing. Now I would, I, because the CSR1000V has OSPF enabled on the same interface, it should form an OSPF adjacency rather quickly. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pull this guy up. And there it goes. So I now have an adjacency to that guy. So that's all squared away. Now I need to go down to BGP. And I need to set, turn BGP on edit BGP. I'm going to enable and I'm going to say this is going to be 65001 and I'm also going to push the default information originate. Click on save. I'm going to add a neighbor. This neighbor, in this case here, is going to be 172.29.11.254. 65001 is going to be our AS. Click on add and I'm going to go ahead and publish that because I have to change to a different uh, connection here. I'm going to go to redistribution I'm going to turn redistribution on for both OSPF and BGP. I'm going to add the first one here is going to be any to OSPF. So OSPF is going to be learning protocols from BGP. I'm going to click on add. And I'm also going to add one here where BGP is going to be the learner protocol and we're going to be learning from OSPF. So we have bi-directional redistribution happening. And then I'm going to go once that is done doing its thing, if I go to e this ESG real quick, and I do a, let me move this over here to this guy. If I do a show IP, oops, show IP BG, or show IP route, I should be learning a bunch of routes in, which I am. And if I do a show IP BGP neighbor, you'll notice I don't have any, uh, I don't have anything set up yet because I am not running the DLR config yet. So uh, back on here, I'm going to go to the DLR. Click on the DLR. I'm going to go ahead to routing, to BGP. I'm going to add a neighbor. The neighbor config is going to be, the interface is going to be on the transit. I'm going to put in here 172.29.11.3. The forwarding protocol address will be 172.29.11.254. Remote AS is 65001. Click on add. And I'm going to go ahead and publish that. And I'll just double check to make sure redistribution is happening the way that it's supposed to be. BGP connected. If I go over here to ESG2 and do a show IP BGP neighbor, I should have an additional neighbor, which I do now. We do a show IP BGP. I'm learning routes in from all that stuff, which is looking good. If I go to the DLR and I do a, let's go ahead and show IP BGP. Now you can see that from a routing perspective, I'm learning a bunch of routes. I have a bunch of equal cost multipaths showing up in my BGP table, right? You see multiples of each route. I've got two of 172.31.1, one, two of the, two of each, right? Now, if I come in here and I do a show IP route, you'll notice that I'm only injecting one because you can only inject one. 
by default, the way that BGP works, this is a, this has nothing to do with VMware. This is BGP operations. You're only going to inject a singular route into the, into the routing table, regardless of where you learn it from. But we can fix that by coming over here to global configuration on the DLR and click on ECMP. It's going to go ahead and push that. And we are going to be able to, once it's done doing it, Give that a second or two to do its thing. Perfect. I'm going to hit. Now you can see that the that changed. I'm going to hit the up arrow, and now we're going to see two routes flowing in: one to 172.29.11.1 and one to 172.29.11.3. So that's basically how that would work. You can do the same thing with OSPF. You can do ECMP routing with OSPF as well. I don't remember if you have to enable ECMP for that one specifically. I'll have to test that one out and come and circle back to it. But as you can see, it's working the way that we need it to. So ECMP turned on, well, all of a sudden we had these this connectivity. If I log into this virtual machine, we should, it's not going to increase our bandwidth necessarily, but it'll at least give us access to the internet. And this might be a problem for us where we don't know which way to send the traffic. So. Um, because I'm going through a firewall, this could be become problematic. So let me go ahead and let's do a simple ping to Google, ping to Google, ping Google itself. Okay, that's better. So for whatever reason, okay. So I think it might have just been stuck, but we got that problem resolved, and everything's working. We have ECMP set up. Everybody's happy with that and we're in a good spot. And that's really what I wanted to make sure that we had dialed in, is that you can do ECMP routing if you want to do it. And just so everybody's on the same page, if we were just to recap what we covered, we have we have our ESG1, ESG1, we have ESG2. We have a connection coming down here to DLR, and then we have a BGP peering going this way and a BGP peering going in this way. We have a connection going up to our CSR 1000V. Now from a route, from an actual physical perspective, the way this is coming into play is I have my CSR connected to a, to a distributed port group on ESG1 and ESG2. This is a a distributed port group that they're both connecting to, right? Now, I have the same logical switch. So it's actually what's happening is this logical switch is connected like this to the DLR. So if this interface or this if this logical switch was to fail, so does my BGP peerings. They go down as well. So like I was saying earlier, it might actually be make more sense to have it set up like this where you have a connection going up like this to this, and you have DLR that connects to one interface, and then you have another link that comes in, and you have logical switch one, and you have logical switch two. So this would connect to, say, interface one, this would connect to interface two. So in the event that this logical switch went away for some reason, you'd still have a, a way to go this way. So you would have link uh, diversity versus just tying everything to the same interface. The same way it gets done. I'm not going to go configure that because it just, I'm not going to. Because it's, um, most people will understand where I'm going with that. Maybe I circle back at a later point in time and, and play around with that. But this is basically where we're at. With that being said, I want to thank everybody for stopping by and hanging out with me. And I'll catch everybody in the next video.